peace be upon you. God willing, today we're going to discuss part two of the last podcast entitled The First Commandment. Inshallah, today we're going to look at uh, the Salat and where it came from and the fact that we should only mention God's name uh, during our Salat. So just to recap, in the uh, last podcast, we saw that the uh, appropriate Shahada according to God, the angels, the messengers, the believers, those who possess knowledge, um, is there is no God beside God, or in Arabic, la 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 la. This is spelled out in chapter 3, verse 18, where it says, God bears witness that there is no God except He, and so do the angels and those who possess knowledge. Truthfully and equitably, He is the absolute God. There is no God but He, the Almighty, most wise. Um, we learned that to say that we bear witness to uh, Muhammad being a messenger is a lie, and actually the uh, Shahada of the hypocrites, according to chapter 63, verse 1. Um, we also saw that it's wrong to make distinction among God's messengers and mentioning uh, Muhammad in the exclusion of all other messengers, uh, that we're actually breaking a major commandment, and that finally that mentioning Muhammad's name beside God is tantamount to idol worship. There's a couple major questions we're going to, God willing, try to address during this podcast. Uh, the first is, where did the Salat come from, according to the Quran? You know, who is the first uh, person to do the Salat? Uh, the second is, uh, should we mention, or does it even make sense to mention anyone else's name uh, in our Salat? Muhammad, Abraham, uh, any of the saints or prophets? And the uh, final is, you know, would a messenger of God ever advocate saying his name in the Salat or the contact prayer? Some people think that Muhammad was the first to do the Salat, the contact prayer. This isn't true. In chapter 16, verse 123, we read that all practices of Islam, submission, came from Abraham. It reads, Then we inspired you, Muhammad, to follow the religion of Abraham, the monotheist. He never was an idol worshiper. We read in chapter 21, verse 73, in 1440, that God gave Abraham the Salat. It says, We made them imams who guided in accordance with our commandments, and we taught them how to work righteousness and how to observe the contact per salat and the obligatory charity zakat. To us they were devoted worshippers. This verse clearly tells us that God taught Abraham how to observe the contact per salat. In chapter 14, verse 40, Abraham says, My Lord, make me one who consistently observes the contact per salat and also my children. Our Lord, please answer my prayers. So we see that God taught Abraham how to observe the contact prayers. And we saw in 16.123 that Muhammad was to follow the religion of Abraham. Throughout the Quran, we see that Jesus did the Salat in chapter 19, verse 31. Moses did the Salat in chapter 20, verse 14, and chapter 10, verse 87. And so did the children of Israel in chapter 5, verse 12. From these examples, it becomes obvious that it wouldn't make any sense for Abraham to mention Muhammad's name in his contact prayer or uh, Jesus to mention Muhammad's name or Moses because these people predated uh, Muhammad in some cases by thousands of years. So we have to ask ourselves, would Muhammad ever tell his constituents to say his name in their Salat? I don't think so. In chapter 3, verse 79 through 80, it reads, Never would a human being whom God blessed with the scripture and prophethood say to the people, idolize me beside God. Instead, he would say, devote yourselves absolutely to your Lord alone, according to the scripture you preach and the teachings you learn. Nor would he command you to idolize the angels and the prophets as lords. Would he exhort you to disbelieve after becoming submitters? So this verse is very clearly saying, that never would a messenger of God tell the people, idolize me beside God. In chapter 21, verse 25, we read, We did not send any messenger before you except with the inspiration, There is no God except me. You shall worship me alone. So clearly, Muhammad was told by God to worship only God, not to mention his name or anyone else's name besides God. In chapter 72, verse 18, we read a very powerful statement. It says, The places of worship belong to God. Do not call on anyone else beside God. 
when we're at our mosque, our place of worship, when we're doing our salat, and we're calling on anyone else's name beside God, that by definition is idol worship. In order to be accepted back into God's kingdom, we have to be absolutely satisfied with God alone, not the inclusion of any other of his prophets, messengers, saints, anyone at that. In chapter 39, verse 45, it says, When God alone is mentioned, the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter shrink with aversion. But when others are mentioned beside him, they become satisfied. So we have to be satisfied with God alone. When we have this perfect shahada, perfect declaration of faith that is accepted by God, the angels, the knowledgeable, that there is no God beside God, and that's it, we have to be content with that. In chapter 4, verse 36, it says, You shall worship God alone. Do not associate anything with Him. In chapter 13, verse 36, it says, Those who receive the scripture rejoice in what was revealed to you. Some others may reject part of it. Say, I am simply enjoined to worship God and never associate any idols with Him. I invite to Him, and to Him is my ultimate destiny. So before we end this podcast, I'd like to end with uh, the following verses. This is from chapter 40, verse 12 through 14. It reads, This is because when God alone was advocated, you disbelieved. But when others were mentioned beside him, you believed. Therefore, God's judgment has been issued. He is the Most High, the Great. He is the one who continuously shows you his proofs and sends down to you from the sky provisions. Only those who totally submit will be able to take heed. Therefore, you shall devote your worship absolutely to God alone, even if the disbelievers dislike it. God willing, we're going to end our podcast here. As always, if you have any further questions or comments, feel free to contact us at QuranTalk at gmail.com. And if you want to look further into this information, I highly recommend to check out QuranAlone.com. Peace and God bless.